Hello, this is a 3S, three cells in series, uh, lithium titanate battery. Now I'm using these Yinlong uh, LTO cells that were very kindly supplied to me by HakadiBattery.com. Now they weren't really supplied to me with the intention of me building a battery pack with them. Um, really it was to highlight the difference between um, a grade cells, the top one is A grade, uh, B grade, this one down here is B grade, and then less than B grade, this one's been marked B minus. And these three cells are very different. Uh, notably, they have different remaining capacities, quite a lot different, um, and also different internal resistances. So using this DL24 electronic DC load, I separately measured the capacities of these three cells and I'll get in close on the display now and we'll take a look at those capacities. So the first cell, which is the grade A cell, um, I discharged all of these at 10 amps so that you can see that the 40 amp hour cell, and it did measure 40 amp hours, so there's the result there. Um, it took four hours because, as I say, I discharged it at 10 amps uh, from 2.8 volts all the way down to 1.5 volts. Uh, this is the grade B cell, so this um, only registered 31.6 amp hours. Uh, it took less time, of course, uh, because it was discharged at the same current, 10 amps. And this was the grade B minus cell, a little bit less capacity, but only three quarters of the capacity of a grade A cell. So this one was 30.7 amp hours and it took just over three hours to discharge at a constant 10 amps. So you can see that in terms of capacity, these three grades are very different. Uh, the grade A cell returned its full capacity of 40 amp hours, the grade B cell was 31 amp hours and the grade B minus 30 amp hours. Now it's worth pointing out that Hakadi battery only sell grade A cells. So if you buy a grade A cell, you're gonna get uh, close to the full marked capacity of uh, these yin long cells. Now this is a 40 amp hour. They also do uh, 35 amp hour and 30 amp hour variants of these lithium titanate cells. But as well as the uh, capacity, the remaining capacity, there is another parameter that you really need to check uh, to know that you're getting a grade A cell. So I'm just going to dismantle this battery pack because what I'm going to do next is check internal resistance. So I'm going to use this YR1035 plus internal resistance tester to check the internal resistance of the A grade cell. So let's get the probes. This has uh, got four probes because it's four wire measurement. Let's get them as close to the cell as I can. And that gives me a reading of 0.23 milliohms. And this cell has a voltage of 2.63 volts. And now for the grade B cell, once again, get the probes as close to the uh, cell as possible. And that's giving me 0.32 milliohms, 2.67 volts. And finally, the B minus grade cell. Let's get a measurement from this one and that's 0.53 milliohms, 2.75 volts. So here are the results for the three Yinlong LTO cells. Now the grade A has the full marked capacity. Uh, there it is, 40 amp hours. Of 40 amp hours and the lowest internal resistance of 0.23 milliohms, the grade B cell um, is much lower in capacity, almost three quarters, um, a slightly higher internal resistance, 0.32 milliohms, and grade B minus has a uh, increased um, internal resistance and also much less than the marked capacity. 
So what are the implications of trying to build a three cell battery using these three LTO cells which all have very different capacities? Now one of the problems with this 3S LTO battery is going to be balancing but I have found this balancer, I'll take it out of its packet. So not only is this 3S or 4S it's actually uh, got five connections, so it will work up to four cells. But it's also NCM, LFP and LTO, so it will keep working down at the low voltage of these lithium titanate cells. So this balancer will work, 3S, LTO, but it's only capable of shoveling at maximum of about an amp and it will only do that when the difference between the cell voltages is large and of course as you discharge these cells because they are of very different capacities the voltages are going to start drifting apart and so this thing will start having to work to bring those voltages back together again. Now another thing I'm seeing with these LTO cells is that some companies who are targeting these at the car audio market are re-sleeving these cells. So they're taking off the original yin long sleeve and they're putting on their own branded sleeves with names like Mega Base and things like that. Now that's all very well and they look great but of course if they're using uh, secondhand cells then you don't really know what the condition is and so it's important to ask the seller of these cells what's the capacity and what's the internal resistance of the cells that you're going to be buying. Now back to building a battery with these three LTO cells. Um, what about a BMS? Well how about no BMS? How about retire, uh, relying entirely upon the active balancer? And of course that's going to be quite restrictive because it means that charge currents and discharge currents are going to have to be very tiny so that the active balancer can keep up with the incoming charge that's forcing these cells uh, into different voltages. This thing will then have to try and rebalance them by redistributing charge between them. So you're looking really at a maximum charge current of about an amp and similarly a maximum discharge current of about an amp. And given that these cells are capable of 400 amps, then you might say, well, it's <laughs> really using the wrong technology for the job. Um, if I can find uh, a... Uh, a BMS that will work with these that isn't terribly expensive then of course I can add that uh, later on. Now what about these studs? On some of these cells it's quite difficult to see uh, how these studs are attached whether they're welded to this square plate or whether this is all one component. But from this B grade cell you can see evidence there that this stud has been welded on to that square plate and on this cell the stud looks slightly different and there is some evidence that there may be some flux residue there so this stud also looks like it's been welded on to this circular plate. Now because Hakadi battery have a working relationship with Yin Long um, all of the welding of these studs is actually done by Yin Long in their factories. And look at these dates. Um, the A grade cell actually looks like it's the older cell, 2016, B grade 2018, and the B minus grade 2019. But these are not manufacturing dates. These are dates related to the test standard, which originally was this QYLE, uh, which uh, YL sounds a bit like Yin Long, but then it changed to the, the GBT which is the Chinese test standard which is used for most things in China. So different factories were using different test standards um, with these associated dates at the same time. So these aren't necessarily the manufacturing dates. It could e easily be completely the other way around. So this 3S lithium titanate uh, battery is going to be going into my shed, my museum of different battery types 
uh, got the balancer. If I can find a more powerful one, then I will use that. Uh, the BMS I'm still looking for, but that's the situation with these Yin Long LTO cells at the moment. And uh, just to round this video off, an update on my attempt to use this little balancer on these Yin Long LTO cells. Now this balancer does say 3S stroke 4S on it, and it does say LTO, but it didn't work. I hooked up um, the first, well, the most negative cable, and then the next cable, it was fine. But then I put the third ring terminal on, and smoke started coming out of one of these MOSFETs. Uh, I took the terminal off and the smoke stopped, put it back on and the smoke started again. And that happened three or four times and now it's completely dead. So yeah, certainly this balancer doesn't like these big uh, Yin Long LTO cells. And I think probably it's just literally to do with the ultra low internal resistance of these cells. And this balancer, I mean, I can't see anywhere in the circuitry that it can have any current limiting. So I'm pretty sure it doesn't. And yeah, it just doesn't like it. Let's have a look at that burnt out MOSFET. And uh, here you can see a heat blister on that MOSFET there. Now this is two MOSFETs actually. It's uh, two MOSFETs side by side. So it's only the left hand MOSFET that's got this heat, heat blister. But that's where the smoke was coming out. Um, it now doesn't come out anymore because I suspect that MOSFET has died. And this LED doesn't light up anymore. So maybe the whole board has failed. So I'm looking for a balancing solution that is better able to handle uh, these LTO cells, not this balancer. But that's it for this video. Cheerio.